If you think this Russia-Ukraine war is something on the side, something that doesn't matter, something that isn't related to what the Bible says and the end times prophecy of the end world's really coming to pass, you have another thing coming. Be sure to stick around to this video because I was shocked to learn what is really happening here and some possibilities that we must understand. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 1, there's a message that came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn and face Gog of the land of Magog, the prince who rules over the nations of Meshech and Tubal, prophesy against him. These prophecies in the Bible tell us of things in the future that are to come and we can know that through the wording of this land of magog it means this land up straight north which if you look from israel israel is the place in which the bible was written and if you look straight up north from israel you can see that the land is russia here's what's kind of crazy though this land that it's kind of like pointing towards includes ukraine and russia and ukraine are two separate countries as of now but russia really doesn't like that because they want to fully be everything they are and also we don't know about vladimir putin and all his different ways he could sure certain enough be the prince of magog here we can see that they're going down in ukraine but that's not all. Also, what's happening with China and Taiwan. Recently, House Speaker Pelosi visited Taiwan and China had a fury about it. They were like flying ships over the area. And there's just a bunch of crazy stuff going on. And we can see that these two countries, Russia and China, are basically right now itching at the bit. Also, they see a weak America. I don't know if you've understood, but we have a puppet president. They see that really they can do whatever they want. And America is just kind of kind of like be blind just with a little blind stick. Check out Ezekiel 38 verse 14. Therefore, son of man, prophesy against Gog. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord. When my people are living in the peace of their land, which is, by the way, Israel. Thank God the people, the Jews, have come back to Israel and they are living there. We should be supporting Israel. As when my people are living in the peace of their land, then you will rouse yourself. You will come from your homeland in the distant north. So the distant north from Israel is really one place I see is Russia. I, I could be wrong on this. Like, this is not like a thousand percent. The Bible doesn't actually say, oh, Russia is going to invade Israel in 2023. And this is like, it doesn't give us the exact year, but it gives us the signs of what is to come. And so this video, you'll understand the signs because I don't want you to be surprised if and when this does actually happen. Verse 15, you will come from your homeland in the distant north with your vast cavalry and your mighty army. You will attack my people Israel, covering their land like a cloud. At that time in the distant future, I will bring you against my land as everyone watches. My holiness will be displayed by what happens to you, Gog. Then all the nations will know that I'm the Lord. This prophetic word is God saying, you're going to attack my people and then you're going to find out who I really am. And God's going to really show himself mightily. Before Russia attacks Israel, they're going to go down south. Any country, they're going to be strategic about the way they do things. You can see Russia is kind of like moving more southwest towards Ukraine and then who knows where they could go next. And we know that Iran is also a very interesting force. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm some perfect scholar. But there are a lot of scholars that can agree that the things that are happening are very interesting with what the Bible says. Gog and Magog attacking Israel is one of the signs that really shows us the end times are here. And uh, again, it hasn't happened yet, but it, I really think this is something that could happen very soon. When I first heard about the Russia-Ukraine war, I wasn't like thinking a ton about it. I mean, it was really sad. There's a lot of things about news, confusion going around it. But most Americans are just like, we're walking our life. It's like, okay, well, you know, the world is struggling, but we're going to focus on our inflation. I understand. But I just want to emphasize to you the life you are living now is the most important. God's invested everything in you. You know, Jesus said, Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached unto all nations and then the end will come. We need to be getting ready. You know, earlier today, somebody was coming by. I just got my studios getting an upgrade. Thanks to you guys. He was going to help me set up my projector screen and I set an alarm for 7 a.m. I was going to wake up, work out. Then I was going to be done, take a shower and I was going to be back in my apartment for him to come and help set it up. Sure enough, I wake up this morning and I realize, oh, uh, there's not an alarm going off. I look at my phone and sure enough, it was text from him saying, I'm here. Uh, hello, I'm on my way into my apartment. And I wasn't even up. I was sleeping in. You can understand. I was not happy when I realized I slept in for the man that's helping me with my studio. Thankfully, we rescheduled for tomorrow. He has mercy. But I'm here to tell you, like when the rapture happens one day, like there's not going to be a rapture round two. There's not going to be a rapture round three. You're not going to be able to re reschedule. God's coming back down to the earth. Jesus Christ wants you to know right now that he loves you so much. He's for you. He's given you his word. He's given you the ability to succeed succeed in this life to fulfill his destiny, to put his kingdom first. The ultimate way to succeed in this life that we live is to spread the gospel through the gifts and callings that God has given us. I'm a speaker. That's what I do. I help other people and I speak. I bring inspiration. I bring hope to other people. I love sports and athletics and I, lo I love a lot of things and I'm using those gifts to help spread the gospel. Now, I would challenge you, what are your gifts? I'm not telling you you're called to a YouTube channel if you want to change the world. I am telling you though, use your gifts. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you're a singer. Maybe you're a, a speaker. Maybe you are called to be a pastor. Maybe you're called to be a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever it is, go out and do it with everything you have because you want to give glory to God with the life that you live. Every single sphere of influence, every single community, we want to change because when Jesus Christ comes back, whether or not you're going to be raptured, whether or not you're going to heaven when you die is very simple. The Bible says in Romans 10, 
Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And so that's the first step. To be born again is the start of your walk with God. Your destination, heaven or hell, it's simple. If you're born again, heaven. If you're not born again, hell. It's not based on your works. It's not based on how good or bad you are. It's based on is your faith lying in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You become born again. You don't just like peace out to heaven and call it call it done. No, you are on this earth because God has a plan for you. I say from personal experience, this past October, I was riding on a skateboard and I hit a bump and I fell and I cracked my skull in half. It was horrible. And I was in a more than two week coma in the hospital. They were talking about me in past tense. They even called my pastor in asking him for like my last will or obituary. I don't know how that all works. I mean, I wasn't really even brain alive for the situation. I experienced myself when I was standing before Jesus in heaven, how I knew that I still had a destiny to fulfill down here on this earth. Thank God for everyone praying. Thank God for the healing power of Jesus Christ. God is so good. He brought me back down to the earth. Hopefully around November 14th, I woke up and I was healed and, and I didn't really have like pain when I woke up and I recovered. I did recovery. Like it was, it was amazing miracle healing proof of God. A lot of people ask me, they're like, Gabe, like, did you just want to stay in heaven? Yeah, it's, there's no place better than there and there's no place better than before Jesus Christ. But the place that I'm called to is the place that God wants me. God's plan wasn't done because I was being stupid on a skateboard. God's plan wasn't done because I made a mistake. God's plan was still in existence for me to fulfill down here on this earth. I came back down and ever since I've come out, back down, I've been sure enough preaching the gospel. I'm, not, I'm never going to stop. Nothing's going to hold me back. You need to see yourself. I know you probably haven't fallen off a skateboard like I have, but you need to see your own life and you need to see your own destiny and understand the importance of of loving God and loving others. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to, if you're worried or stressed about things right now, throw those on God and focus first on his kingdom. Think about today how you can love someone, how you can do the dishes for your family, how you can help out your neighbor, how you can smile, how you can bring joy to your community. As the body of Christ, as the team here, we don't have time to waste. We don't have time to get caught up in worldly things. Instead, we have time to get ready for when Jesus Christ comes back. Because this news that I'm sharing with you, it is really sad that Russia and Ukraine are in a war, but there is good news at the end. And at the end of this book, the Bible, we win. And that's what we need to keep in our minds. There's a tough time that we walk through, but at the end we win. And that's the joy that we keep riding to. And I just want to let you know that God believes the best of you. He's completely for you. The blood of Jesus is thicker than your mistakes. If you will repent, I'll be the first person to say I've made many mistakes. I've sinned a lot of times, but yet I've, I've understood that if I repent, I will be completely forgiven. And that is how you walk free from sin. Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross so that you could freely sin. He died on the cross so that you could be free from sin. And so I just wanted to encourage you, repent of that sin. Just confess it before God. You don't have to be afraid of God. You don't have to fear what he's going to think of you or how he's going to feel towards you. He's already made it clear that he completely loves you. So run into his presence today and trust him. You know, my mission here is to keep spreading the gospel. And I want to say thank you guys for supporting. If you'd like to support, smash the like button, share this video to a friend. Be sure to subscribe tomorrow night at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to join that Zoom, click the link down in the description below. It's a community for us where we do Zooms and Bible studies. You can fall in angels and the Euphrates River is drying up. I mean, it seems like all in one year, all these things are, are happening. Click this video to learn what's really going on.